in Missoula, I want to tell you about a, an insidious plot that I think threatens private property rights. And I think, although it's, it's endemic and an epidemic in Missoula, I think it can happen in a lot of other towns, even small towns. And it's basically how to put smart growth processes into a city. Uh, listening to Randall this morning, he captured a lot of what I'm wallowing around in, so to speak, and some of the rest of us. We just didn't know what was happening to us. He really cleared a lot of things up for me. Uh, so I just, my object in my talk is to demonstrate how smart growth can become part of a city's culture without citizens understanding what is happening to them. An interesting part of that was yesterday I had a quick conversation down in the hall here with, pardon me while I screw up your name, uh, with Chris Corbin, and we talked a little bit about this, and some of the things I mentioned, he apparently wasn't even aware of it. And that's the problem we have in Missoula. A lot of these things are being put into place and nobody knows it's happening to them. I liken it to the old story about the frog. If you want to cook a frog, you don't put it in hot water. You put it in cold water and turn up the heat. And eventually you've cooked the frog and the frog never knows it's been cooked. And that's what's happening in Missoula. So recently, the city and the county hired a new director of what we call the Office of Planning and Grants, or OPG. And OPG handles all the plats, annexation, that kind of thing for both the county and the city. Both, both of those two entities fund the, that particular department. Well, it turns out that this new director we now know has a lot of ties to Smart Growth. And I don't think any of us realized at the time. He's a very intelligent individual, very smart, professional engineer. And from that standpoint, I have to admire him very much, but he certainly got smart growth on his mind. So first thing he did when he got there, he started in with what he called Urban Fringe Development Area, UFDA or UFDA. And you can draw any conclusions you want from that. I call it UFDA Gate. Uh, Supposedly, the urban fringe development area is the area between city limits and the wastewater service area. In other words, you have city limits and then we've already agreed we're going to run the sewer out further to certain areas. But it didn't take long before we figured out that that's not what he was interested in. He's interested in the core of the city and trying to densify it. And so he came to the city council and the planning people and said that we should anticipate 15,000 new households in the next 20 years. And this is based on an assumed 2% growth. It was interesting to hear said that Missoula is going to soon uh, be the biggest city in the state. I kind of question that. Uh, it has seen, shown some real growth, but our growth has not been 2%. That 2% he was referring to is due to annexation. And using these numbers, of course, creates a faulty foundation for analysis and for making uh, decisions that eventually are found to be not very sound. So when we challenged these numbers, what we got back in the retort was, well, never mind. We'll eventually get there anyway. So his, his proposal and his program is to densify the city. Uh, I will pause here occasionally because I'm trying to reformat some of my talk after what you heard from, from Mr. O'Toole down here. Not that he did anything, I think he did excellence, but I, like I say, we're wallowing around in, the, in what he's described and we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, our argument against densification was just what Randy said. We argued that new citizens coming into Missoula will not want to move into densely populated areas. They come here because they want space. But this argument failed to move anybody on council or in, in OPG to recognize that. Their, their objective is to densify Missoula to make it look like one of those pictures of East Germany. So it's kind of like we started out through all this. We had a lot of good information rounded up, it was, and uh, it, it was impressive to see some of it. But like I say, regardless of, uh, remember, information is like a neighbor with a new gun. It's very admirable as long as they don't use it on you. And, but that was not to be. They are starting to use that already. And as near as we can tell, the goal of those in power in Missoula is to make Missoula nearly carless and to eventually have a density, an average density across the city of about eight dwellings per acre, which supposedly is the number of dwellings per acre that is considered 
to be necessary to support public transit. In other words, to get rid of cars, you gotta have some way to get around. So they're gonna they want up or upgrade and increase the bus system. Well, once all this information was on the table and uh, the city council and the planning department, all those people decided the next thing we need to do is we need a zoning update. And this is when it really got dirty and I think this was their ultimate objective all along. The, the city put out a request for a proposal for a zoning update. The successful bidder was Duncan and Associates from Chicago. Didn't we just hear something about Chicago? And the firm was represented by a gentleman called Kurt Bishop, and we've been able to tie down that both his firm and he have a lot of ties to smart growth. Uh, our current, or I guess it's not longer a current, our previously current zoning ordinance was referred to in, our, in the Missoula area as Chapter 19. And it's a couple decades old, and obviously it had a lot of things around the day. It had some things that needed to be cleaned up in it. And as the word verbiage started to show up in the newspaper stuff, it was cobbled together over the last decade or so. So OPG billed this new contract as a rewrite to clean up confusing requirements, to consolidate wordy or duplicative language, and to take out uh, obsolete provisions. So the first provision, or the first thing they did was to throw out chapter 19 and create a new one, chapter 20. Okay, to a certain extent that makes sense until you stop and look at what they're really trying to do. And with the new chapter, they started putting new ideas in such as smaller lot sizes, which will increase the density. In other words, if you had a situation where you could have four dwelling units per acre, now they were small, or making those uh, permitted acreages for each dwelling smaller, so you, when you ended up with an acre, you would put in six houses, five houses, six houses, seven houses, that kind of thing. What's this do? This increases the density uh, back to East Germany. Uh, they put in such things as ADUs, additional dwelling units. And I think I heard that mentioned in, in Randall's talk somewhere. Additional dwelling units, when your neighbor can put something in his backyard because he has a certain amount of space. It may be a one story or two story, maybe another an apartment on top of a garage, that kind of thing. Yeah, they build a lot of that as these were uh, granny apartments. This is where you brought your mother-in-law or your grandmother and she was in her older age and she could live, you'd take care of her, she had a place of her own. When she passed away, then you moved out of your house into there and you rented your place to your kids or the college kids. Interesting. It caused a lot of uproar immediately. They, they made more restrictive parking re requirements. The funny thing was when they talked about having ADUs and more density, they did not allow for more parking. In fact, they restricted parking in many developments to, to basic, you know, like two cars. In fact, you may have a child in the house that has a car or you may have company come over some night, there's no place for them to park. They allowed businesses in the residential areas. This goes with their thinking that you want to be able to walk down the street to your job, walk down the street to the grocery store, or walk down the street to the, to the laundry or whatever, or at most you have to take a bus. Uh, they raised the occupancy limits. We had limits on how many people could live in the house and that kind of thing, and they increased that, which again goes to this increase the density. 